Hello and welcome to the Gusset Singodes podcast episode 26. My name's Christina and this is my podcast about my knitting, stitching and all my crafting. I uh, had to pop in today because I have two projects that I am desperate to show you. Well, one I am super desperate to show you and um, I'm speeding away on it, which is partially why I have not podcasted since my last one because I just can't put it down even just for like the half an hour it takes to set up the podcast. Um, but I have to show you because it's beautiful. Um, also the other reason is the squirrel who lives in the roof um, has been being very naughty and um, we were hoping that he would go away really naively but he has not gone away so he's having someone come and move him on. <laughs> Anyway, so that's been a bit of a drama, but let's ignore that. Ignore the squirrel. Nina is. <laughs> She's gotten used to it now. Nina's the cat. She's down there. She's watching me in a very judgmental manner. But let's move on to the project. So, it's here. And um, isn't it lovely when your project bag matches your yarn and your project beautifully? So, it's actually quite an old one. It's a... Um, well, it's a dandelion and dogwood bag, but before they changed their name, so Little Tayloress. What a lovely bag. I love it so much. And it came with this tiny little envelope lotions bag, like pouch with a little popper. Just too cute. Anyway, I have started knitting. And it's fluffy and it's peach. It's the Maybe Baby colorway. And this is her... Perfect sock, um, 80-20 superwash merino nylon, along with her feather down 72-28 kid uh, mohair and silk. <sighs> oh, how nice is that yarn? When I think of dandelion and dogwood yarn, I mean, they have so many beautiful colourways. Everything that I could wear any of their colourways happily, like 100%. I just, I could lucky dip out of a box and whatever I picked would be a gorgeous item. But this is a colour which will, I will always remember of their, of their yarn. Do you think every brand has kind of got that one colourway? Every yarn company's got that one colourway that you just instantly, yes, that's them. That is what I think of with this yarn. So Amy has designed a sweater, uh, the Whitmore sweater, and um, I asked her to test knit it. And I'm gonna just show you because it's just so beautiful. It's a top down sweater and it's got a lace yoke and it's knit the round, which is basically my favourite way of making a sweater. <sighs> How gorgeous is this? Oh my. And it's peach and fuzzy. So the lacy yoke is stunning. And I'm making it with the bishop sleeve, which may or not be a mistake may or may not be. I just, I've never knit a voluminous sleeve of any kind. I only ever make a tapered sleeve, exclusively. I'm trying to think of anything I've made without. I think never. But it looks so good in the photo of Amy. I just had to make it. So it's, well, I left, I left my waist yarn because I liked seeing how long it was getting and I thought it would be good for making sure I was accurately measuring that two sleeves were the same. This, I'm not asked to keep that in the pattern, I just thought it was quite cool. So it's completely straight sleeve and then it's going to be like... <clears throat> so it's going to be all beautifully voluminous. And I'm super excited about this sleeve and I was on the fence halfway through, I was thinking, ooh, I made the wrong choice but I tried it on just now 
and I pulled it in and tucked the needles under my watch, I made the right choice. It looks so good. Anyway, uh, I made it in the small size. I think I'm not sure whether the sizing is going to stay the same, so I will let you know once the pattern is published. I'm sure it will, but um, I knit a smaller size than I am because I wanted it more fitted, and it is made with quite a lot of negative e uh, positive ease. I measured the measurements of the pattern, I compared them with my favourite cardigans and jumpers which I have knit, and made my decision based on that. And I checked the stitch count against, um, against what I'd already knit um, in other garments and compared it to the pattern. So I was super confident mostly, that it would come out nicely. Oh, the sun has come out there. It's knit up really well. I did like a tiny boo-boo the first time on the lace yoke and um, that was very disappointing. So I did tear it back. Let's step into my office. Um, I, yeah, I, I made a little mistake and ordinarily maybe I wouldn't mind that there was a mistake in it, but seeing as it was a test knit, I wanted to make sure that there were beautiful photos for, for Amy because it's just such a beautiful garment and I personally would choose to knit something based on people's projects on Ravelry. So I wanted to make sure that it was just, you know, nice and well done for her because it was a test knit. And um, I'm really glad that I did. The first time that I started knitting it, I was struggling a little bit because I'm not a, a lace knitter. Um, I'm a stockinette knitter. I could knit a hundred million meters of stockinette and I would be still enjoying every second of it. So it was a it was a bit of a challenge for me. But I managed it. It was a pleasure to knit and the first time I felt a little bit um I was wary because it's not something I do and the thing is it's actually really easy. So that's the annoying thing about it. I'd in my mind kind of decided it was going to be difficult. And therefore I was struggling. Well, when I redid it the second time, I just threw caution to the wind and it um, it worked out fine. So, um, yeah, the second time I could really see the pattern coming through. I could see where all the little holes were meant to be. And yeah, it's brilliant. The pattern's super clear, which always makes things much easier. And I can't wait to wear it. I don't know what I'm going to wear with it, but I think I might make something to go with it. I probably already have things, but is there anything better than making Guilford out of it? I think you'll only understand that if you also sew garments, because it's very rare, I think, that people make bottom half garments. It's all about the top half with the knitting, not about bottom half. But when you sew and you knit, it just gives you so much freedom. This is my favourite. Oh, and I'm in a pastely tone mood. So when So Sweet Violet did an update and I just checked her shop, she had these lovely, lovely stitch markers and progress keepers. Oh, and my favourite ever progress creeper is a pink pom-pom and now I've got grey one too isn't that so lovely it's like a bunny tail it's a bunny tail but no bunnies were harmed in the making of it so even better and the thing that made me go onto the web onto her website was this hello hello little bunny She's excited to be on my knitting. So these are gonna all go on this knitting 
and all be friends together. Just, you know, a little cheeky treat. <laughs> so I've got left one sleeve and the ribbing and more ribbing. Ribbing is my maybe my least favourite part of the project because I am um, it takes me double the time to do ribbing than it does to do stocking net. But never mind. Never mind. Just want the garment now, to be honest. Don't know if I've got anything to say about it. I got myself all excited about showing you the project. I don't. I don't think I've sh actually told you anything really of great importance, I just rambled a little bit. But, oh. That is one pretty little parcel. Kind of terrified of getting it dirty though, my project bag. I, I'm so gentle with it, I won't put it down. Mostly I just kind of chuck my project bags about, but when they've got a light bottom, I just carry them like a little baby. Don't Don't ever part with them. Okay, other project is also a knitting project. I started it prior to this with some Christmas yarn that I got from my dad for Christmas. Oh, he didn't choose it though, just to be clear. I mean, that would be like his worst nightmare. Buy me some yarn. No, I sent him the link and how many skeins I needed. So it is Quince & Co Finch, 100% American wool in the Boreal color. Quince of Coat Finch and the colour, put my hair on it, brushing my hair for the podcast and got it everywhere. Yeah, so that's a really good colour representation I think. It's a forest green and um, I think a really easy colour to wear for the autumn winter and I've got some beautiful check fabric I want to make some trousers out of which has a green thread running through it so this will go um, with it so full outfit um, oh I've got this in my um, busy pottering project bag which I got in my um, swap at Christmas I was spoiled rotten at Christmas with my advent swap arranged by Lay Family Yarn and um, gosh, this is such a beautiful bag from Busy Pottering, absolutely stunning because I've been really enjoying using that. And here is the project, it's knit in pieces, it's called the Pinna Cardigan, I'm not going to say um, the name of the designer, I found it with, I found it on uh, How To Do Fashion which is a website to do fashion yeah they're a pattern company they sell sewing patterns and um, they had a designer I believe they had a designer design a knitting pattern so it's not designed by how to do fat how to do fashion but it's for them so it's knit in pieces and um, it is I had to pin it down flat because you know with um, anything knit in the in pieces it just like curls up so you've got the button bands along the middle this is one side it's a v-neck it's got a, a ribbed waistband um, it's shaped out over the hip and then the middle has got this kind of v cutout shape because um, the last button is at the waist uh, what else can I say about it? I really struggled knitting this in some points. You start from the bottom and you work your way up. And I was doing the rib whilst decreasing on one side, increasing on the other side, um, then buttonholes. I mean, it was, it was constantly changing. I'm so sorry about the light. Um, 
but I'm hoping that this will be a really useful garment. I've laid it flat over my favourite cardigan, which is currently the Forestberry jacket or Forestberry cardigan uh, by Febbled Knitwear. Anyway, um, the yarn is beautiful. It's showing the detail of the rib really nicely. Um, and the detail of the um, moss stitch. And I think it's lovely. And then it's got a... Um, you continue knitting the neck band and that will then go around the back of the neck some somehow not done that part yet anyway i've got two front pieces done i'm working on the back piece but it's on hiatus while i finish my pink fuzzy one and um yeah fingers crossed that this goes well now this pattern shows you how to do buttons which you make out of the yarn i can't remember what that's called now when i was on the lay family yarn retreat someone was telling me and showing me the buttons that she makes um, for her project and to be honest I'd never realized that you can use yarn to make buttons but it's brilliant because I really struggle to find nice buttons really struggle to find nice buttons that match the project so I mean if they're made of the same thing that completely gets rid of the issue of finding the right buttons because they like they already match because they're made of the same yarn. So I'm really interested to try that. In fact, I may film when I try and do that because I think that could either be a hilarious fail video um, or a great success. Either way, it would be really enjoyable to watch and for me to remember. Because I do, I do, well, I haven't actually ever gone back really and watched my podcasts after I've published them. I really enjoy watching my own podcast when I edit it. There's something purely vanity based about that that I really love. But I do. I really, really love watching my podcast and kind of looking at my projects nicely displayed. So, um, yeah, there is nowhere on this project, which is Stockinette, which is my favourite. I knew that going in. I made the decision to challenge myself. I'm glad that that was a decision that I made and I didn't just go into something I wanted to make and then was shocked because that would be horrible. I'm trying to remember about the sleeve. I think the sleeve is ribbed all the way down as well. I have actually enjoyed all of the knitting of this. It was just, like it was a little bit of a struggle increasing and that increasing and decreasing on on the same row but on different ends my mind was like that was really something to think about only because I knit in front of the TV watching films otherwise it would not have been a problem at all anyway so we will see whether or not this fits I am hopeful laid it on top of my other one that I like and I actually I buttoned it up, I put the buttons from the underneath garment into this and just laid it flat so I could see whether or not it would fit and it does line up with the other garment which is, I think it's a really good sign. Yeah, I feel like this yarn is not going to pill it's too badly. got anything else to show you I'm wearing my um, my no frills um, sweater and um, it, this is a really really lovely knit and um, I've really been enjoying wearing it it's a nice slap you on it's really lovely and warm because again this was something I would never have made in the past it's that little bit looser it's that little bit more roomy looser fit but I've gotten a lot of wear out of it, so that's thumbs up. I really do want to go through my handmade garments 
less of my knitting to be honest more for my sewing and just clear away anything that does not fit I really need to do that that is one of on my list of things I want to do for this year I made a little list of 20 for 2020 after I saw Miss Lavelli um, Katie from inside number 23 I thought that was a really brilliant idea so I haven't even finished 20 things is a lot of things I had five just off the bat painting my windows and um, painting my kitchen because someone originally painted it in non wipeable paint so if I ever get like a little speck of like tomato sauce or like you know when you're cooking bubbling away if you wipe it off in a moment of forgetfulness all the paint comes off with it it's quite spectacular how easily that paint just disappears anyway um so clearing out my garments is a big one and uh, last year i did quite a few refashions where i took garments which i had loved before which didn't fit and either made them bigger or restyled them or used the leftover fabric to make something um, that would go with it and that worked out super well. I was I was happy with um, with all of those pieces. So I've got a wool red dress that I think I might make into a pinafore. Maybe I'll uh, pull that out onto the mannequin for next time. I can't actually do up the zip all the way on my own because it's a really fitted sleeve and a really high zip in the back. And um, I don't ever want help with someone dressing me. I feel like mortified to have to ask somebody if they can <laughs> oh dad do you mind helping me with my zip oh no 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 or going into work and asking one of the girls oh. well it would be okay them doing me up but it would be at the end of the day saying oh can you half um open my zip so that when I get home I'm not stuck so yeah I've got a few little pieces and then I thought I could make a little blouse to go under the pinafore dress once I've cut off the sleeves so these really, I'm just feeling very inspired, very inspired. It's a lovely sunny day and I think I should have a little wander around outside. It's important to go out and about. I don't always do that. Sometimes I don't leave the house on my days off. And it's not a good feeling by the end of the day. So I've put it on. Oh, one last thing. So the squirrel lives upstairs. Jason, my love, he does not like the squirrel. I don't dislike the squirrel. I'm just worried that it's going to chew through the wires, the electrical wires, and set our house on fire. But the squirrel in general, I'm not opposed to, just the damage that it will do. But I was thinking of doing a squirrel embroidery and putting it on our embroidery wall. Well, I've only got a few bits on it, but I would like to really fill it. But I'm not going to tell Jason and I'm just going to pop it up. It. But he won't notice at first. I'll put it up and I won't say anything. And then at some point he'll notice it long after the squirrel is gone. And then oh, he'll be shocked. So I thought that would be a really funny thing to do. That probably says something about my personality that Jason hates the squirrel. So I'm going to embroider a squirrel so that it can be on our wall for all of eternity. But wouldn't that be so funny? I'll have to find a really good squirrel embroidery. I haven't really designed any of my own embroidery. So um, I, if I can, I will um, I'll go with something someone else has designed. You know, that's not my skill set. So I'm more than happy to um, pay for a design that someone has beautifully curated and done all the hard part. <laughs> that's my cheeky side. Mocking the poor man with the squirrel. Um, thank you so much for joining me. This was a little bit of a random episode, but I just, I just had to show you my fuzzy peach. And for the rest of the day, I'm gonna make that other sleeve. And then tomorrow I've got my train, so I'm, I will get a, next week. It's gonna be done. Christina, finish it. You want to wear it i need to take some photos oh i'd love to take them in knightsbridge sometimes my friend ivanka 
on our lunch break. She um, she comes with me and we go around the back of Harrods where there are beautiful houses and, well, I take her photos usually, but this time she can take mine and we can have like glam pictures. Okay. And I do have one other project which I have just finished but I'm not going to show you and it's a hat. But that's because it's not yet been published and it's a test knit and um, it hasn't been revealed yet on social media or any other plat uh, of her platforms so once that is I don't know I don't want to you know give any information out or share photos before I'm allowed so holding back on that but I have a sneaking suspicion that someone is going to steal my hat I've taken good photos if he does but he looks so stinking cute in it and when someone appreciates knitwear that much I feel that the the knitting gods are just you just have to just allow it to find its true home no he's very knitworthy and he really likes the pom-pom he really likes the pom and he looks so cute he looks cuter than me in it it's mine okay i'm going now thank you so much see you soon um yeah so for now thanks a lot bye guys see ya